Although he's not so new, because in the last three weeks, he's been two weeks he's been doing stand up, he managed to do something more. Five, six gigs now? This is show number four. <coughs> there we go. <laughs> he's really at it. So, welcome to the stage, Jimmy Mackey. <laughs> Thank you, that was overwhelming. <laughs> Good to see so many smiling faces out there. At least I think some of you are smiling. I don't know. So I was on my way to a meeting last night, and I was working on our Gale Street. <coughs> no good start. I was walking along on Gale Street, and uh, a young couple passed me on the other way, uh, going the other way. And I can't imagine what they were talking about, but the young gentleman of the couple exclaimed as he was passing, Aye, but you can't marry Allah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, Jimmy. There's no joke to that. I just I thought it was funny. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a teen pop sensation, Jimmy McKee. Nice to see you all. This is show number four. Uh, let's see a show of hands. Who's all unemployed in this room? Go on, Robin. Get your hand up. That's not as many people as I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> Am I to assume that the rest of you with paying jobs are all just too cheap to go to the stand? Yeah. <laughs> Good, so am I. <laughs> I'm sort of unemployed, but only in the way that I sort of live with my parents. I'm actually really, really, really unemployed. <laughs> that would better than I thought. I'll say sort of unemployed because I kind of fancy myself as a writer. Um, I'm not doing very well at it, obviously. I don't know what it is. It could be the economy, it could be the market, or it could be the fact that all the time I should be spending writing is spent looking at cute animals on the internet. <laughs> now, today's special was dogs who look stoned. <laughs> <laughs> so this set me off on a whole tangent. For this bit, you're going to have to use your imagination. If you've had a few drinks, it might be easier. But imagine that for one part, I'm myself, but I'm also a stoned dog. To help with this, I'm going to do a costume change. This is me, and this is the stoned dog. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't exactly have a budget. <laughs> so this is a conversation I have with a stoned dog. Imagine it's at a party. I don't know why you take a dog to a party, but you would. Just cause. All right, boy. Roll over. Roll over. Man, I don't even have thumbs. I can't roll another. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a bad idea. Um, how about play dead? Just play dead. I'm not really feeling that, man. I'll play some Floyd though. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, normally he does better tricks. I don't know what it is tonight. He's just feeling a little weird. Oh, I've got an idea. I'm going to that. Ah, alright, okay. Face the ball. Face the ball. Face the ball, boy. Where's the ball? Where's the ball, boy? Where's, where's the ball? Dude, I think you're missing the important question here. It's not where's the ball, but why is the ball? <laughs> Coincidentally, I'm not allowed to have a pet. <laughs> I had a goldfish once, but he ran away. Material. Have a quick drink. <coughs> so, um, out of all the unemployed people, does anyone watch the right stuff? <coughs> y'all, y'all more into like Jeff Kyle, uh, the old Jay Kizzle. Jeremy Kyle show is what I'm trying to say if you don't understand the modern parlance. I was watching the right stuff this morning. I hate it, but I was watching it anyway. I don't know why. But uh, <clears throat> they're talking about her four-year-olds and they're addicted to like gadgets like tablet computers and smartphones and stuff. Apparently what they did, they had a bunch of kids, right? They're used to being around gadgets and all that sort of thing. And they took away all the tablet PCs. They took away the smartphones. And apparently what they did, they exhibited behavior similar to that of someone going through heroin withdrawal, which are things like anger and inability to focus and other general forms of rotation. Now you might think, oh, that's very interesting.
but you might also think they took away a four-year-old's toys and now they're having a tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a bit more obvious to me. Uh, what's the next bit? <clears throat> next bit is I drink. Right, <coughs> <coughs> I mean, I'm not for like four-year-olds having smartphones and stuff. I think it's a bit pointless. And that's not because I gave my little cousins my phone to play Candy Crush and they ran me off a massive phone bill. <laughs> no, it's much more deep-seated than that. But I, ultimately, I don't think it's any worse than a parent who plops their kid in front of the TV for hours on it end, you know? I mean, if you really want to see a child act like an angry junkie, what you gotta do is turn off the TV midway through Adventure Time. <laughs> <laughs> They'll mess things up, man. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're all thinking. And you're right. I do look like the love child of Frankie Boyle and one or more of the Proclaimers. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. And yes, I have been this ugly all my life. Oh. I don't need your pay, shut <laughs> You see, being this ugly has meant that I've developed a thick skin and uh, certain self-defense mechanisms. Chief amongst those is a talent for self-deprecating humor, making jokes about oneself. And it's served me pretty well, but my girlfriend hates it, right? My girlfriend hates when I make jokes about myself. And she's all like, Jimmy, just remember, self-deprecating is only a few letters removed from self-deprecating. <laughs> the other night, I thought I'd be quite witty when she said this. And I said, well, to be honest, honey, I'd rather shit myself than if others have the privilege to do it for me. <laughs> I messed that one up. I'm kind of drunk. Anyway, uh, she didn't really appreciate that. <laughs> She didn't really appreciate that, but I'm starting, I'm starting to worry. We're talking a lot right now, and I'm starting to think we might be, you know, deeply emotionally incompatible. You wouldn't think we'd have this sort of problem, considering she's imaginary. No. <laughs> no. I've actually been there. Uh, how much time? <laughs> I don't want to run off. <laughs> I'd rather get off as quickly as possible, to be honest. <laughs> well, I've got other material. Anyway, <laughs> let's not get hasty. I've actually been single for a while now, and I'm starting to think it might be a good idea to get back on the dating scene. But I don't know the best way to do it. Right now, I'm starting to think the best way would be online dating. You know, for me, it seems perfect. It's all the fear and anxiety of meeting women, but I can do it in my pants. <laughs> And a lot of my, my, all my female friends would keep saying, you know, we're going to set you up with someone nice. We're going to find you a nice girlfriend. One of them's in the corner. I'm not talking to her right now. <laughs> but I am not for that right now. Because I'll tell you this. The last time I was set up on a blind date, the girl's mum was convinced I was a pedophile. <laughs> I'm not going to tell that story. I think it's funnier if you make your own conclusions. <laughs> but the fact is, if I'm told... If I'm told Oh, hi. Sorry. So you come in late and then you take up the stage. It's, uh, it's cool. Good to see you. <coughs> hey, thanks for coming. You know, you look a lot like my friend Debbie. Yeah. But you probably get it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. What is your name? Lydia. Lydia. Yes. Nice to meet you. Cool. I don't have any other material on that, so. I'm just going to leave you tonight. Have a good one. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, where the fuck was I? Peter Fowl. Yay! Of course, you remember that one. <laughs> uh, the fact is, like, I've been, I've been reeling from my last breakup, and it's a bit, it's a bit weird trying to get into another relationship. I mean. This is kind of relevant to everyone, but have you ever met someone, you ever met someone, every time you see them, they give you butterflies? Like, literally, every time you hang out, they'll hand you another butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> is that just me? <laughs> okay, so this happened. And it was... <laughs> so this happened, and I can't tell the story. I've been Jimmy McKee, good night. <laughs> Very, very subtle sort of in a timing uh, thing. But um, I find 